nachflügenden Rostig. Oh, er lutscht nicht mehr. Hey, ich will wissen, es noch ruhig ist. Na, stoi. So, uh, tell me something, my friend. Yes. Have you ever danced with the devil in the pale, pale moonlight? moonlight. <laughs> <laughs> Should you hand me that box of Cracker Jacks? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I'll take, here's what I need. I need a chicken sandwich, and I'm going to need you to hold the chicken. <laughs> and just bring me the bread and the butter. All right. As we squint, squint our way through this weird morning light. Yeah, and my voice is blasted from two weeks worth of whiskey classes. <laughs> it's... It's the teaching, I'm sure. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing else. Are you even in the mood for whiskey at this point? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I didn't drink anything last night. Oh, okay. Uh, and the, most people don't know this, yeah. except for our psalms. Yeah. On the last night of whiskey class, mm -hmm. all the psalms go up to the vault and they just hang out and sample things and try stuff because this is their resource library. Right. Right? On that night, I yeah. make a pot of tea and I don't drink all night long. <laughs> Because I need to be okay. You're, you're the designated driver. Yeah, I'm a designated adult in the group. So uh, last night I just drank a whole pot of tea. Before somebody says, hey, let's make a blend in the trash can. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or let's do so, belly shots off of another person. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, so donation day. So what I tried to do today yeah. was... So all, how does this fit within the Daniel week? Because these are all whiskeys donated by people who just attended one of the whiskey classes. Oh, the songs, yeah. And so I'm jumping them to the front of the donation line. And also because I really wanted to try these things. The only, the only reason why that is acceptable. Yeah. Because there's a queue, there's yeah, a line. Yeah, there's a very long line. Within the rule set of Daniel Week, yeah. Rex Month, or in Rex Infinity, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah. Do whatever the hell you want. Yeah. That's the rule. The rule. Whatever the hell you want. So these are all whiskeys I really wanted to try, and I didn't want to have to wait yeah. for a year right. to get to them. All right, so what's this first so one? So this one is Middleton, a special edition Middleton Irish whiskey. Okay. The Barry Crockett Legacy Edition. Now, we've had Middleton. Right? What makes this a special edition? This one is, uh, well, they're all unique. So every Barry Crockett Legacy version is a different blending based that, that Barry Crockett is choosing. Is he the master distiller? He is the master distiller. Okay. Um, he's personally selecting old and unique pot stilled barrel age things. All Middleton oh, stuff. I got glasses. Right. Uh, all Middleton. Okay. Right. Now, is Middleton one of these distillers that has a lot of other sub-brands? Yeah. Okay. Look, there was a point in Irish history right. where every single Irish whiskey in the whole world was made at Middleton. Okay. Every single brand, everything on the shelf, coming out of Middleton. Now, follow-up question. This special release where mm -hmm. they're just pulling a whole bunch of different Middletons, yeah. are they counting all of their sub-brands as Middletons they can pull from, or just the ones that are known as Middleton? No, I think they're just, they're pulling things that they specifically crafted in order to be a part of the Middleton brand. Because the Middleton brand has always stayed a Middleton brand, even while they were technically uh, contract distilling for all these other brands. Uh, pear. Oh yeah, yeah, that's rich. Rich, rich pear. It's, and it's got that oak. And it's got a, a, a lacing, a lacing of butter around that pear. This is, by the way, Ooh. from uh, Level One Whiskey Sommelier and Magnificent Bastard, Chris McNally. Hold on a second, Chris. I kind of really want to hear Daniel do the Magnificent Bastard with his voice. Yeah. <laughs> Chris McNally, you magnificent bastard. No, you didn't even go for the growl. It, sounds I could, it died out. <laughs> I didn't have any longevity you on that. You magnificent bastard. <laughs> yeah. You magnificent <laughs> bastard. Yes, vanilla, it's slight, oh, the taste. 46%. If you think this is just gonna be pure, pretty, simple Irish whiskey, right. take a sip. Mm. This is rich. I'm getting like actual peppers, like peppers in food, the spicy food kick. Right. I'm getting- um, Ooh, it does, on the back end. Yeah, like starting, green peppers. Yeah, starting about midway, and then on the back end, you get that, springy, wow. that springiness. That's the oak, so, right? that's the oak spice in these aged spirits. But um, super cinnamon spice. Uh, the dominant note for me though is it's like 60% rich pear. Yeah, vanilla pear. 
yeah. Like vanilla ice cream with pears. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to neglect the butter note though. Yeah, because <laughs> the Irish butter is still there. Yeah, no, it's still definitely an Irish whiskey. In a lineup, you would still spot this as an Irish whiskey, no but, question. But I would put this right up there alongside some of the uh, more favorited Irish whiskeys that people like going to, like the Red Breast. This is superior to me to the Red Breast line. Really? Yeah. This now, hold on, before you're about to cause a lot of pain and heartache. Uh, if this is impossible to find. Yeah, it is. Well, what are you doing? Don't just say... No, donation day. It's comparable. Just say it's comparable. Don't make the people feel like they're missing out. You're totally missing out, by the way. <laughs> You're so screwed. <laughs> no, this is exceptional. Whatever, I... Captain Redbreast32. <laughs> oh, man. So, I could linger with that one for the rest of the day, but we're going to move on. I don't want to move on. I don't want to move on. All right, we're now moving to a very special... Release of Forty Creek Confederation Oak. Mm. Now this is aged, if I remember the story correctly, and I haven't done any research on these. I just wanted to open them and try them. So I think Co this is from Cody. Cody Nelson, you magnificent bastard. Um, okay, so supposedly. There were these two trees that were cut down and used to age this whiskey. And they were old enough that they would have taken root around the same time that Canada became a country. Really? I think that was the oh, story. That's interesting. I'm going to take these sunglasses off even though I'd really rather be wearing them right now. Right. Okay. So, this was Cody Nelson, our friend from the Great White yep. North. Yep. Who was saying... Oh, he's... No, here's, he's Canadian. He, he's saying, here's some good whiskey. He's quite skilled at the memes, too. Yes, he is. Yes. <laughs> the meme master, really. <laughs> Rich rounded off Canadian. Uh, yeah. That's there. So, but it, 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 it's uh, more rich than I often get from Canadian whiskey. So here's the thing about Canada that you've got to give them credit for and people don't understand. Um, there is a part of their process that's pretty traditional in Canada and happens very commonly, which is that they will create a relatively higher proof neutral grain spirit, essentially okay. a vodka. Yeah. And then they'll separately create a spirit that's closer to like our bourbon right. or our rye that's a mixed grain mash bill and a lower proof. Yeah. And then they will age them and then they'll blend them together to make the whiskey that you're drinking. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people hear that and they think, oh, you're just blending whiskey with vodka. That's why it tastes like Canadian whiskey. Right. And that's shitty. But here's the thing, by law in Canada, it has to be aged at least three years or it can't be whiskey. Hmm. Which means, even though part of this blend is a higher grain alcohol, yeah. not necessarily this one, but in traditional Canadian spirits, even though it's a higher grain alcohol, it still has to be aged for three years. <laughs> so even their neutral grain spirit is right. three-year-old spirits at minimum, right? And I think that's what lends, you know how pot still is unmalted barley and this, I think that's what lends Canadian whiskey its certain tinge is that you're actually getting reasonably aged Neutral grain spirit, high proof spirit. Okay, so it's not vodka, it's actually. It's not vodka, it's actually aged. aged. Yeah. And I think that's when mixed back in with the typical mash bill. Is there an oak requirement? It's gonna be new oak. It's gotta be uh, used oak. New oak. It's gotta be no, oak. no, it's just gotta be oak. It's aged gotta be oak. oak. Yeah. Okay. Huh. All right, do you happen to know off the top of your head how the climate of Canada compares to that of Scotland? Um, because. It's actually, uh, well, so what's weird is you would think that climate happens north to south. Mm -hmm. But in Canada, because of the mountain ranges yeah. and the weird islands and the seas bringing in weird climates, the Nova Scotia. there's actually like a three split, like more typical weather on the east, some typical so weather in regions. the middle, they got regions. and more and a different round of weather on the other side of the Rocky Mountains. Yeah. That only counts up to a certain point and then you're headed into the Arctic and all bets are off. Right. Um, but I will say, you know, like Nova Scotia, for example, seems to have pretty similar uh, temperature ranges. To Scotland, and that's about up there. So this is going to be, I think, closer to Scottish temperature ranges. It's maybe not to the rain. It's really hard to find something to hate about this. Yeah, right. It's uh, it's eminently likable, like the Canadian people. Yeah, uh, but it's also fairly fairly simple. There's not a tremendous amount of complexity, and it may be because I'm coming off the heels of that. Yeah. Right. But you know, it's funny is people would think of Irish as simple and friendly. That's true. But that's got but this, complexity compared the one, to this. Yes. The one we had, it was super rich. It had a, an abnormal number of 
notes going on. Yeah, this time. has a lot of really rich dessert flavors. Mm -hmm. Cream and, and dark fruits and things like that, you know? Cream. Um, vanilla, Car heavy vanilla. Cream, caramel, vanilla. It reminds me of a cupcake for some reason. Really? Like a cupcake with frosting, but the rich, bready sweetness. Mm -hmm. uh, but the aftertaste, there's a little bit of dryness in the aftertaste, and then it's gone. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Interesting, nice. Cody. I dig it. So this next whiskey is from Ergen Ulick. Ergen Ulick, you can make the vision. Ulick? Ulick. Ulick, you magnificent. Bastard. Yeah. Ergen Ulick. All right. What, what's, what's the nationality? What's the background here? Uh, born, raised, American. All right. Parents. Uh, Tulsa, Tur Oklahoma. Yeah. <laughs> Parents, Turkish. Okay. Ulick. Um, now. You're just having all sorts of problems today. Dude, look, they've buried the little thing you're supposed to peel back on this. All right. Oh, oh. I think it's funny that people uh, eschew my knife skills when it's really that I just don't care. <laughs> well, you don't care with me within, like, 24 inches of this yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> but did you see how easily that was done? That's If I'm taking care, that's what it looks like. No. I think it's more fun to hack at it because I yeah. think it makes for better video content. <laughs> it's, it's, it wrecks his face. It gets more interesting. You would feel so bad if you damaged this face. You know, actually, I would. Yeah. It would be a loss to the world. Yeah. The thing is, you're prettier than me, and I'm sort of riding off those coattails. <laughs> yeah. I'll fix that. I'm sort of living in your afterglow. <laughs> so, Denver, Colorado. Right. Now, the one thing you can say for Leopold Brothers is, holy crap, are they obsessed with the art mm -hmm. of this. They are for fermenting in massive open air wood ca tanks. Okay. Right, like wood washbacks. Mm -hmm. um, they are, which just lets any manner of outside yeast and bacteria get in there and so affect the flavor notes. Yeah, go ahead. They are, uh, if I'm not mistaken, malting their own grains on their own malting floor. Okay. And just super care over every single so, part of the process. That right there, because you, you're saying they're super into the art, yeah. so they're malting their own grains and their own floor, they're super, I'm, I'm, I'm getting, the, it, it elicits ideas of precision. Right. But this open air bit, it's like no. right, that seems very, very at odds with everything else you're saying about people that are very much into the art and the process. They're about go returning to our original era when you didn't have all this control, but you still focused on your craft and you know, flaws were a part of the magic. So as somebody that would be into blacksmithing if they could only use tools that were around at the you know, turn of yeah. the 19th century. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Somebody told me that um, now, that this note that you and I keep finding. The green note. It's this green, slightly sappy note. But it's got a big dose of cinnamon mixed in with that note. And there's a lot more sugar in this nose behind yeah. that. Um, it's coming from the cuts. Really? And it's not, and it's not getting time in the barrels to age out. So how old, how old is this? I don't know. We don't know. It didn't say. It's forty three percent. It's very sweet. Now, um, you know what I've started to equate this to? Hmm. There are some Scottish malts oh. that start with this weird sour funk, right? A malty funk, right? Um, and then there are some American whiskeys that start with this sappy note, right? I think it's the same kind of thing. It's Pulling in the certain area of higher cuts into the heads or something like that. The nose, I was somewhat concerned. It's a really nice taste. Yeah, but it's got this slightly sickly sweet. So I think they're calling it, I wonder, I wonder. Oak. I wonder if they are calling it American whiskey mm -hmm. because they're aging it in used casks. Oh. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you guys can help me because again, on these whiskeys, he's I didn't. Going back for more. I didn't really. He's do, got a green note, and he's going back. Yeah, for more. I really didn't do my research on any of these. I just wanted to drink some whiskey. Because it's Daniel whiskey. Because I'm tired. Because you don't got it. It's and I'm got gun. I'm not gonna. Next one, I'm actually kind of excited about, just for the interesting novelty of the thing, and this is from Bryce Hansen. You've seen Bryce Hansen Bryce in the Hansen. comments and the Patreon and things. Bryce Hansen, you magnificent. <laughs> Now, here's the thing about Bryce Hansen. He showed up in level one sommelier class. And, you know, it's, you get to meet these people that you've only ever read their names and their comments, but you've never actually <coughs> seen them. Yeah. Bryce Hansen spent the whole class with his new name, Irish Jesus. 
Because he has this beautiful long hair yeah, yeah. and this beautiful rich beard, right. and it's just bright red. Somebody said he's like a cross between Daniel and Rex. I was like, yeah, and your beard's better than both of ours both combined. Both of ours combined, yeah, <laughs> no question. And uh, he said that he hadn't that hadn't become a common thing for him, and we were surprised <laughs> because it should be. So we now have our own tribe, Irish, Irish Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Uh, so it looks like he should be on the front row, charging into the field of battle. The yes, it really movie. does. Um, Icelandic. Yes. Young Malt. Stop there. How cool is that? No, that's very cool. Iceland. I've known this has been uh, a thing for a while now because the Gene Neftuliev. Yes. I turned him on to the show Vikings. Oh, yeah. Several months ago. Yeah, look. He loved the Vikings. And uh, my favorite character and his most hated character <laughs> is Floki. So Isn't that a weird boat builder guy? Yeah. Yeah, I like He's that. He's an guy. amazing character. He is the quirkiest, yes. weirdest dude. I yeah. think he is like the coolest. Neil, no, Ragnar Lothbrook. Yeah. He's like, you know, he's good. Of he's course good. he's cool. For like the main dude, he's really, really and he's good. He's supposed character. to be that character. But Floki, Gene hates that character. Why? He can't stand him. Why? So we we'll debate with him. So. Whoa, uh, smell this. No, it's, it's. It's that same green note. Well, it's a. It's, but it's, with a weird background. It's a different bent, though. Mm -hmm. It's that, that green note, but then a lot of... I guess this is... Overly ripe green apple. I want you to read those words overly, right there above my thumb. Overly ripe green apple. Sheep dung smoked reserve. <laughs> so... Now, is I that the picture of the country or some... That's the country. All right, because I'm thinking... Maybe, piece of yeah, did they really do a silhouette they of a piece a of... They did a silhouette of, of sheep dung. <laughs> So well, they just wanted to show you, this is what it looked like. Whenever we, what I guess they 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 smoked it, they burned, they burned the 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 sheep dung. In America, somewhere. this would be like cow patty whiskey. Right. All right. Well, for it being smoked with, it's not nearly as offensive as you might expect. This is barrel fifteen, bottle two hundred and eleven. Do they just not have enough wood? In Iceland? Well, no. Think about it. Right. A lot of these places. You don't have a lot of trees. I mean, there's enough to make a whiskey. No, look, dude, look dude, for, hang on a second. By volume, I think there's You're more from... trees than sheep. No, no, no. It's probably not true. <laughs> you are from Oklahoma. The I'm look, actual, absolutely. There are whole historic pieces. I, I moved here in the, from, in the like yeah. the first grade. That's true. But eastern Oklahoma, yeah, tons of trees. That's right. fine. Western Oklahoma. You had to resort to burning cow shit because there were no trees to cut down in the prairies. I think, that is a known thing in history. I think you are misrepresenting the arboreal truth. <laughs> I love that you used the word arboreal <laughs> in the middle of a whiskey video. <laughs> I think there's more trees than you're letting on. No, there's something in there that this is reminding me of, and for the life of me, it's right on the edge. I keep looking for the... Whoa, it just lingers. I keep looking for this. I keep finding wood. Yeah, just this oily wood oak note just hangs on forever. It's unique. It won't go away. Hold on. It's unique and I don't hate it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. No, I, this is not something I'm like, oh, gross. But it's also something that my brain is having a really hard time right. so figuring out. When we're talking about the hero whiskeys and the background whiskeys. This is not a background whiskey. You're going to go exploring in this, right? You may not necessarily fall in love. I don't think you're gonna hate it, but this is definitely a funky adventure. Is it a nutmeg? No! Oh, is it a nutmeg? This may be power of suggestion. Yeah. But you know how I don't eat lamb? He doesn't eat lamb. And it's because I was in lamb barns in high school a lot. You think? And I had to clean them out. You think through the, the sheep dung there is a transference of essence of. I'm getting this weird, uh, like, cooked lamb. Cooked lamb. Next. So. Like meaty, you are so tuned protein. in. You are so tuned in to essence of lamb I can that tell a lamb shit. could shit it out, and that shit could be burned, and that burning shit can turn into smoke, and, I can and that still smoke sense the lamb. could go into a grain, and that grain could be distilled into liquor, and that liquor can be aged in a barrel, and you can still pick out there's lamb in there's this. There's lamb in this thing. <laughs> it's like people who really hate onions, right. they can spot from across the or mayonnaise. Right, right. No, I think there's this. Uh, you know, like a really nice cooked, uh, like a lamb shank with the charred edges and yeah. cooked like a steak. Mm -hmm. And you get that meaty, proteiny, mm -hmm. toasty yeah. note. But behind it is that lamb funk. We're going to do the final one of the day. 
and it's one that we've already known and loved. Oh, peat monster. the peat monster. Yeah. You want to wash out that essence of lamb? Yeah. With some monstery peat? You're going to wish you were around for level three, the second day of level three. Yeah. The reason that I, this is I a popped, brand new bottle. I popped in for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Is that uh, the final exercise of level three right. is oh, to create your own blended whiskey. I like, I like to do that. Right? But I don't want you to just make something up because that doesn't help. Right. I need you to understand the art behind blending. Right. And so what we did in level three this year was we took a compass box whiskey because they are transparent about what goes into their blends. Oh, right? Yeah. And try to figure out the right amounts. And I said, here's Pete Monster. Yeah. I'm going to pour it into a glass. You're in teams of two. Right. And then here are the four dominant whiskeys that are in Pete Monster. Yeah. Can you get, how close can you get to recreating Pete Monster? And they all have their own mixing tools and everything. How close did you, did you all get? Uh, everybody. Right. So there's, this is really nerdy. You need to drink while we're talking about this. Because it's about to get really nerdy. Thank you. Yeah. And by the way, what's in here, if I remember correctly, is Kalila, Lafroig, Legig, and Ardmore. Mm. Oh, come on. It smells good. So when you're blending a whiskey, or when you're creating a blend, uh, in oh. my opinion, there are two parts to recreating a whiskey. Yeah. First, you have to achieve all the flavor notes that are in a whiskey. Right. But second, you have to be able to mix them in such a way that the flavor journey is identical. Right. Right? Yeah. yeah. So the flavor notes are when you drink a whiskey and spread it all around. Mm-hmm. That's your attempt to discern all the different nuances and things, and you write them all down, right? Real good. Real good. It's Rex would excel on this movie. <laughs> so, but then here's the thing: just getting all those flavors in there. Yeah. That's actually not the hard part, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it is. It's hard if you've never done it before. Right. But um, mixing when you're starting with the four, yeah. mixing them all together, you're bound to get all the notes in there, mm -hmm. right? The hard part is to get them in the right proportions so that the journey of how they unveil themselves happens in the right order. Now for me, Pete Monster does this. It goes sweet, then vanilla oak, and then ashy smoke, and then ashy dry finish. Sweet, oak spice, ash, lingering ashy notes. Okay, yes to all those things, but I think that's the progression. The mm -hmm. obvious note is peat smoke. It's all on a bed of peat smoke. Yeah. yeah, but you're gonna get that no matter what because we just poured a whole bunch yeah. of smoky whiskey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right. all those things, but so peat that, smoke. But that's the order, right? right? Yeah, yeah. Sweet, oak, ash, yeah. lingering dry ash notes. Yeah. Right? And in an, each one is slightly dominant. The sweet is down here. It looks like a wavelength. Mm -hmm. Sweet is down here. Oak spice gets more dramatic. Mm -hmm. uh, the smoke spreads out and goes big, and then the ashy note drops down. Mm -hmm. Now, if you blend those in the wrong order, you get those same flavors, but not in the same order. Uh, you get your first get... taste ashy, and then, oh, it got really sweet all no. of a sudden. And then the lingering aftertaste was oil. By Does wrong order, do you mean by the incorrect volumes of each one? Okay. If you put the incorrect volumes, then the order of how it unveils itself changes. Right. And that's when it quits matching the whiskey. Okay. Right? So getting the flavors in there is solid, and that's impressive. But getting the order of how the flavors unveil themselves requires getting the proportions exactly right. Mm. Now, we obviously couldn't recreate it perfectly mm -hmm. because... We were using aged statements of all of the whiskeys that they put in here. And they're not going to And they're so probably so. not doing that, right. right? But I will tell you, right. the team that had Mitch Weddle on it. Oh, the Weddle. Got within 2% <laughs> of the exact right proportions. So everybody tried it out and then... And they swapped, they swapped two, but if you swap those two correctly right. and get them right, right, they were within 2% of the correct flavor, of the correct proportions. Wow. Which is yeah, yeah. pretty impressive. Everybody in the room was within at least 60% of the way there. Yeah. Which is, and by the way, m blending peated flavors yeah. is hard. Well, it's maybe the hardest kind of blending. Because the peat smoke is going to be 
the thing is just yeah like dominating your attention and you have to yes it, you know it's like it's like remember back in the day they had those abstract all these kind of little pixelated weird things and then yeah. you have to let your eyes kind of rest and go blurry and yeah look exactly and then it turns into a 3d thing that's exactly that's right. kind of like you know in order to get stuff beyond p you have to just stop let your eyes looking, go blank. let your eyes go blank and <laughs> basically let your palette just you know, go uh, blank, and then you can start to sense the things beyond that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, by the way, we'll end it with this is from Level 3 Whiskey Sommelier, John Kelly. John Kelly. I kind of want to hear you struggle He's more than again. a magnificent bastard. I think he might now be a patron saint. John Kelly, you patron saint of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Worst angel ever. Uh, 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 <laughs> angels are drunk. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. All right. That's all I got. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, we're ending Daniel week. <laughs> yeah. That was really fun. Yeah, you liked it. I really did. Good. So um, are we going to keep up the fun for the next week of Rex Month? You know what, Daniel? Yeah. The theme of Daniel week. Yes. Because I'm so... Generous. I think we should have next week be Tribe Week. Oh. Well, it depends on who answers the call. <laughs> In the comments below, what do you want to see on this channel? I want to hear directly from the people. I'm sure we'll figure that Starting out. Starting Tuesday. <laughs> because Monday is yes. already set aside for something Special. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight Daniel. <laughs> no, wait a minute. If you steal, wait, wait. No, may you going? steal from Daniel. No, wait. I don't like where this is headed. And if you drink, no. May you drink all of Daniel's whiskey. Country road, take me home to a place. That's the Vermont Wild Whiskey to take mama, take me home, Whiskey Road.